before we get to what's next for you, I want to take you back to your last fight, uh, UFC 255. Things obviously didn't go your way. Uh, you know, I guess, give me your thoughts on that. What, what went down that night? What went wrong? Can you just kind of walk me through it from your perspective now that you've had some time to think about it? Um, honestly, I mean, I felt the fight was, I mean, for as long as it lasted when I was on the feet, I mean, I felt like I was in no crazy danger or anything. Um, you know, just one simple mistake. It just, I always said time and time again, so whoever's on that, on that day, you know, and we both happened to be on, he just happened to be a little bit better, you know, it's like guillotine and, uh, yeah, I mean, I was more than ready. I knew it was coming. I knew that's the only way he can actually, I felt like he can actually beat me. And, uh, you know, I feel nine out of ten times I win that fight. You know, it was that one time he he got me. And, uh, you know, great job to him and his camp. They did their homework. Uh, you know, good job. So did you really tack it up to just kind of a technical technical mistake in that that uh, that scramble there that led to the submission? Or or kind of is, is, is that kind of what you're, you're, you're thinking was – yeah, I mean, said, I mean, people are telling me, oh, you got caught. I was like, there's no such thing as getting caught, man. Like, I threw it up, you know, he did his thing. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, time to move on, you know. If I dwell on it, you know, if I go back and think, what if, you know, none of that's going to change which, what, what happened. Uh, all I could do is, you know, take it on the chin and get better. There's nothing else, really. It's a great attitude to have. And, and I know that the probably the most high-profile loss you had had prior to this one was the, the Joseph Benavidez one. So having suffered that loss, the, the Benavidez one, do you feel like it made the process for you a little bit easier for this one? Just kind of like, hey, look what I was able to do after after I suffered a loss before. Kind of give you some motivation? Or, or does a loss sting regardless of, of who it's to in the scenario or whatever? Um, I, a loss is a loss, man. I feel that... Um... I mean, I, I'm, I'm the biggest sore loser in the world. I, I hate losing. I'll show respect and everything, but I'm a big sore loser. I hate losing. Uh, after I lose, I usually go on the treadmill and run, you know. Um, it's just, you know, I mean, no one likes to lose. I, I've had, like, there's no excuse. I have the best camp in the world. And even if I have a shitty camp, it doesn't matter. Like, no one likes to lose. Um, I think the thing that helped me with the Benavides fight, I think it's just from my wrestling background, I've – you know, it's not the, I wasn't undefeated in wrestling. I always had to come back, whether it's in a tournament where I've lost and had to come back for third, which you have to come back right away. Or if I've lost in the finals in a wrestling tournament, I've had to come back and uh, make adjustments. So I think that's what kind of helped me. I think the Benavides fight just showed, like, after losing coming back, I can still get better. Like, people think that, oh, you know, I lost that way. Well, look what I did the last three fights. Okay, I lost this way. Look what I've done these fights. You know, I've improved every time I've gone out there. So... I think that's the only thing that Benavidez fight shows. I think mostly my wrestling, like my wrestling mentality, my wrestling mindset is what kind of helps me get through the losses. And I guess physically, did you come out of that fight unscathed? Like right now, are you are you training? Are you preparing for, for trying to take your next fight? Physically, you're feeling all right? Um, my, my right hand was a little banged up. Um, I mean, I don't know how. Only, you know, do X amount of punches. Uh but my right hand was a little banged up. But other than that, I mean, I'm I'm just got the okay to start training again. And um, I mean, I'm always in the gym, even when I wasn't able to really hit stuff. I was still working on different things. My right hand might be hurt, but my left hand's still good. My kicks and my knees and elbows are still good. So I've been in the gym the whole time, just getting better, getting ready for the next one. Um, you know, let's see what they give me. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. The division right now is in an interesting place with uh, Figueredo and Moreno likely going to be the, the next title fight again. Brandon Roy vows out for months. It seems like with the with the surgery, kind of leaves you. It leaves uh, you got Benavides and Askarov going to fight Cody Garbrandt, Manel Cape. Is, is there anybody that kind of interests you that sticks out above the pack that you're like, hey, this would be a good next step for me? Uh, honestly, whoever they give me, I, I don't really choose and pick fights. Uh, they give me the call and I just answer. You know, um, it's just one of those things. Really, it's just what whatever they want to do. Um, I know a lot of the top guys, I think like top four, top five guys are all re uh, booked. So um, wh whoever's next, honestly, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm ready for whoever. I got to fight. Like if I want to be champion, I got to fight everybody. So that's kind of the mentality I take it with. And uh, that's kind of the mindset I go with. Um, there's no point in like, oh, I'm going to call it this guy. I want to fight everybody in my division. Because then at that point, it leaves no doubt that I'm the best guy in the division. All right, and uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll ask this question then. In terms of uh, 
how many fights away do you think you are from from getting another shot? Do you feel like with another win or two, you're right there? Um, I feel with another two, maybe two, three wins. Depends on the opponent, quality of opponents and stuff. I mean, I go out there and finish, guys. Uh, who knows? Um, it just all depends, really, who who I fight next. Um, I mean, I'm open to fight the number, you know, 15 ranked guys that aren't ranked. Uh, I'm just willing to fight. I gotta make money. I'm here to fight. But I think maybe two, three fights, depending on the opponents. If I, I mean, say if I fight, you know, uh, the number seven guy, and then I, I beat the number five guy, and then I beat the number two or three guy, then I mean, I think that would be a good case. But at that, at the end of the day, it's just whatever they decide. Um, you know, I've seen people get skipped for titles. I see people um, get looked over. So it just all, all depends on what the matchmakers want to do. And uh, with with the title fight I just referenced, Figueredo Moreno, um, kind of give me your thoughts. I'm assuming you watched that fight. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. What did you think of that fight? And I mean, how do you see the rematch going down? Do you think it would play out any differently the second time? Um, I mean, from what I heard, I heard that Davison was sick or something. Um, I mean, who knows? I mean, I kind of expected it to go the first three rounds, um, Davison, and then the last two, Moreno. Moreno, like, uh, Moreno, I mean, he's fought one of my old teammates before, uh, Ron Skolzdang, and, uh, man, like, Moreno has, that guy has heart, because I watched my, my old teammate just freaking wreck him, you know, and this, it, it was crazy to see how much punishment that guy can take, and I kind of figured, like, okay, if he can outlast, the, if he can take the punishment in the first three rounds, and he, sh he could finish him in the thir uh, fourth or fifth, just because of the gas tank problems I felt that Davison had. But, uh, I mean, it was only a draw because of that low blow. So, I mean, I feel that if Moreno comes out earlier this next time, uh, he'll he'll win. Comes out, like, a little bit quicker, puts a little bit more pressure on him, he'll win. But, I mean, it's just hard to say because Davidson can put the lights out with one punch. Last question, man. Uh, for fans that are interested in, in seeing you back, do you have any sort of timeline you're looking at as to when? You know, you just said you, you got your – Got cleared to train. So when do you think we'll see you back? Um, so I just got cleared to train, but also um, having a baby. Uh, baby's oh, congrats. Due, thank you. The baby's due February 1st. Um, so I, I would prefer, like, you know, obviously March 6th. There was all, a lot of flyweights are getting booked on there. But March 6th, March 14th uh, would be ideal. I would like to get three fights in this next year. You know, according to everything goes to plan, but around there. But I, I mean, I told the matchmaker my baby's born. If, if it, you know, if it works out as the timeline goes, you know, if it, was, it comes out the, on February first, man, I'm ready to fight the next couple of weeks. You know, I'm starting to train and stuff. Um, end of December, I'm, my weight's coming back down, and uh, getting back in the gym full time. So I'll be ready to go whenever. But my ideal would be March sixth, March fourteenth. Well, that's great news, man, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back. I know a lot of people are so. Appreciate the time for always, and uh, go take care of those dogs, all right? <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a good day.